Hey guys, I'm Sun, I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, I want to discuss how to cleanly uninstall apps on macOS. Now, before becoming privacy conscious, I use an app called App Cleaner. It's an app that is free that essentially will look at the file system and find different files that are related to a given app. And instead of just deleting the app from the application folder, it will allow users to delete that app and a bunch of related files. Now that is a much cleaner way of uninstalling apps, but it uses a free app that is proprietary and I clearly don't understand the business model behind that app. So as I've mentioned a few times in the Privacy Guide series, if something is free, usually there's a caveat. It's not always the case, but I did reach out to the people behind Free Mac Soft and asked about the business model and never heard back. So I wanted an open source alternative that I could trust. So I went ahead and reverse engineered how this app works and came up with a really nice little script that essentially does the same thing and it's probably actually more thorough. So without further ado, let's, let's jump in and have a look. So as usual, the reference material will be linked in the description. Uh, that will be a really simple guide today. So the first step is we wanna make sure we create slash user slash local slash bin folder and uh, granted, uh, not granted, but change ownership to us. Uh, now this requires sudo because we're essentially changing file ownership. And as you guys know by now, my password on this demo computer is super shitty. Yours should be much longer. Uh, the next step is download and make executable the app uh, dash cleaner dot sh script. Now, very important warning. Uh, you guys should never, ever, ever download a script or an app from the internet and run it without knowing what it does, unless you really trust the author and even then don't trust verify. So first things first, I did include uh, a PGP signature for that script so you guys can make sure that there was no man in the middle attack that I actually wrote that script or peer reviewed that script. And I also included a link to my PGP public key, which you can confirm its fingerprint on YouTube or on GitHub to make sure that I am actually who I say I am. Now, it, for the purpose of today's episode, uh, we're just gonna suppose that it's trusted. And at the end of today's episode, I'm actually gonna do a code review with you guys using, uh, using Visual Studio Code to show how it works. Uh, so right now, first things first, let's see it in action. So we wanna call the script and then we wanna drag and drop an application. So let's say we wanna delete Jitsi, uh, not that it's bad, actually I'll create a whole episode on Jitsi in the near future. So once this is done, we wanna hit enter and what happens next is the script will search for running processes to make sure that they are killed before moving forward and then it will search the file system for files related to either the name of the app, which is Jitsi Meet, or its bundle identifier, more on this in a second. So once this is done, if we hit yes, it will move all of those files to the trash. Uh, that is pretty cool because it actually allows us to restore an app by right clicking and clicking put back. I'll explain how this was done uh, when we do the code walkthrough in a second. Now, say we wanna do the same thing here so run app cleaner, uh, whoops, run app cleaner, but this time on an app uh, such as VirtualBox, uh, sorry, not VirtualBox, Veracrypt. App cleaner also has an interesting property where it is aware of something called bomb files or bill of material files. Those are files, I'll explain those in a second, that include a bunch of different paths to files that were created when installing the app and it actually saves this on the desktop. So we won't go ahead and uninstall Veracrypt because it's pretty cool, but you, give, you get the idea. So it actually found you know, a whole bunch of bomb files, plists, stuff that you know, most uninstallers would actually never catch. So now without further ado, let's have a look at how this works. Uh, so we're gonna go here in user slash local slash bin and app cleaner. I'm opening this uh, script in Visual Studio Code. 
Um, so, okay, first things first, it will just print out its usage info if a path to an app is not included when running it. Then it will go inside of dollar uh, sign one, dollar sign one is actually this and applications on macOS are actually folders. Uh, I'll just show what this looks like actually. If we right click on Veracrypt, we can sh click show package content and as we can see, it's it's essentially a folder. So it will look within that folder for an info.plist file. Within uh, that plist, we can actually extract the bundle identifier. And the bundle identifier for an app is something that is used as a naming convention to store files related to the app. Once this is done, it will look for running processes uh, to make sure that we're not you know, moving stuff to the trash can that is actually running on the operating system. So we're doing that using pgrep and we're act extracting, uh, you know, anything that matches the app name. So the app name in the context of, for instance, uh, Veracrypt will be Veracrypt. Then uh, it will go through all of the processes and it will ask us if we want to kill them. And if we want to kill them, we just type yes and it will essentially run uh, kill on all of those found processes. Next up, uh, we have a bunch of paths. So uh, we're gonna start by looking inside of that special folder on macOS that includes BOM files, BOM files, so bill of material files. As I mentioned earlier, uh, if we have a look in the Veracrypt folder, we'll see that we have the BOM log. That is something that the script will actually generate automatically. And that's a list of all kinds of files that are installed uh, by, the pa uh, by the installer in the context of Veracrypt. So those are files that we might wanna have a look at if we wanna go even one level deeper, being super duper thorough and making sure that all of those files were deleted. So that's more of a power user feature, but I wanted it in, sorry, I wanted that included in how this script works. Now the next part here is it will look inside of a whole bunch of folders uh, that may include things related to either the bundle identifier or the application name. Now that list is what I could come up with. There might be other folders that you guys are aware of. If you do have ideas, please submit those ideas as an issue on GitHub. And while we're at it, if you guys have a Git hub account, please consider starring the privacy guides repo. That's really good to establish trust in the community. So then we're gonna go through all of those paths one by one, and I'm gonna use find uh, to essentially find files that are related to either the app name or the bundle identifier. Then I'm gonna list them and sort them and ask us, uh, ask the user if we wanna move those files to the trash now, instead of using RM, which would have been uh, potentially easier or more predictable from a command line perspective, I decided to use uh, some Apple scripts to actually move them to the trash can using Finder. Now, the reason why this is happening here at the line with uh, OSA script is I wanted us to be able to put back a file. So if I was using RM, it would just have vanished. But since we're using this line here, we can actually right click on a file or on a folder and click put back and it will actually restore the app. So it's kind of a foul safe to make sure that we don't uninstall an app by mistake. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for you today. That script is super, super useful. So if we go back to the reference material, here's how we use it. It's really straightforward. It's an open source alternative to App Cleaner, and I'm really feeling comfortable with this. So hopefully it's helpful. Um, yeah, I'll see you soon, bye-bye.